Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, can you hear me? Maharaj, we can hear you loud and clear. Okay. Yeah, we had a, a very big storm here just now, so maybe the line will be unstable today. So, don't worry about it. Okay, Maharaj. Just one of these things. The translation of the Isha Vasha Mantra 1. Anybody remember it now? Everything animate, Punita Maharaji, have you memorized the first mantra? Ushai Maharaj, everything animate and within the universe is controlled and owned by the Lord. Therefore, we should only accept things, uh, things that are necessary for himself, uh, which are set aside as his quota, and should not accept any other things, knowing well to whom they belong. Okay, yes, very good. Okay, so we'll go ahead. Uh, yesterday we were speaking, we're, be we're, we're on Mantra 12 yesterday, we heard about the absolute and the relative in relation to worship and we heard about how people some people worship the demigods and other people are impersonalists they worship the impersonal absolute which is not it's not really the absolute it's just a, another form of the relative so it was described that the worshippers of the demigods, where do they go? Punita, you remember? Um, to the darkest... I don't remember. <laughs> where did they go? Then worshippers... They go back to the demigods that worship. Oh, they go back to the planets which the demigods pre... Um, I don't know. Yeah, if, if you worship the sun god, where do you go? Back to the sun. And if you worship the moon god, where do you go? The moon. Yeah, you go, you go to the moon, yeah, and you can reside there on the moon planet. How long can you stay there? But if you worship the demigods and you go to the demigod planet, how long you can stay there in the demigod planet? Anybody? Nantini? You can stay until your all your punyas run out. All right. Yes. Right. That's right. You can you stay there until you finish up your pious activities, and when your pious activities are finished, then what happens? Then you go back to the material world. Well, the demigods are also in the material world. Don't think because you go to the planets of the demigods that you're going to the spiritual world. The demigods are also in the material world. You didn't leave the material world. When you went to the planets of the demigods, you went to their planet, but their planet's also in the material world. The sun and the moon is in the material world. It's not in the spiritual world. Right? Remember, yeah. if we worship Lord, if we worship Lord Brahma, where do we go? Brahma Loka. Okay, Brahma Loka is the highest planet in the material world. In the material world, it's the highest planet. And Prabhupada quoted the verse from the Bhagavad Gita, 
from the highest down to the lowest, from the planet of Brahma down to the lowest, all are places of what? We know? Misery. Uh, Temporary misery. They're all places of misery. Why? Because it's material world. Because of repeated birth and death. Yes, yes. because it's a place of birth and death, right? You, you go to the higher planet, you go to the sun planet or the moon planet, it's a higher planet. It's not as high as Brahma, but even if you go to Brahma's planet, it's also, you know, it's all the material world. And in the material world, there is birth and there is old age and there will be disease and death. You know, in the higher planet, there's not so much disease. There's, there's very less disease there in the higher planet. But there is the fear of death. Even Brahma has to worry about giving up his body. He lives a very long life, many millions of years. But he also has to worry that one day he has to give up his life, give up the body. Just like us, we all know we have to give up our body sometime, right? We don't know when, but we know sometime we have to give up the body. So this is true even in the higher planet, even the highest planet, the planet of Brahma. There's also the fear of death. So. If we worship the demigods, we can go to the higher planets and we can stay there for some time, then we have to come back. But in this verse of the Ishopanishad, it says, worshippers of the demigods, where do they go? They enter into the darkest region of ignorance, right? Why? Punita, do you know? Ignorance because um, no, Maharaj. I'm sorry. Okay. okay. So uh, the reason is because. This is the material world and even the higher planets, you know, you worship the demigods and you may go to the higher planets for some time, but it's still in the material world. And the material world, remember how it was described? The material, each universe, what is it like? How is the universe const constructed? What is it like? You remember anybody? Like a coconut covered by a shell. Yes. Filled with water. Right, like the coconut. We're in the coconut. This universe. We're just one tiny planet in this coconut. And there's many other planets, but we're just like one coconut. And it's dark. <laughs> Right? It's dark, miserable, but they put a sun and they, Krishna puts, puts a sun, puts a moon, puts a sun to make it warm and light and he puts a moon to make it cool at night. And so, it's designed so that we feel a little comfortable. We don't realize though, we're in a coconut. And if you worship the demigods, you're going to stay in the coconut. You're not going to get out, right? But then the verse also talks about the, 
the so-called worshippers of the Absolute. What is their situation? Where do they go? They go to Vaikuntha Loka Maharaj. The so-called worshippers of the Absolute. Let's read the verse again, Mantra 12. What does it say? Read the verse, Ram Gopinath, translation, Mantra 12. Those who are engaged in the worship of demigods enter into darkest region of ignorance, and still more so the worshippers of the Absolute. So the, the worshippers of the Absolute they're described that they go into even worse situation. Who are these so-called worshippers of the Absolute? Now, Prabhupada talks about some kinds of some kinds of people. Well, he talks. He said there's two kind, There's the atheist who say there's no God, and then there's the impersonalist. And what do they say? What do the impersonal atheists say? There's no God, and they say time of death, everything is finished. What about the impersonalist? What do they say? Yeah, God. Everyone is God. Yeah, everyone. Yeah, and and. Some of them claim that they are incarnations of God. Some of them claim that they are the incarnations or they are the acharyas. And they've come to save everyone, to tell everyone that they're all God. So and these people are cheaters. They don't teach the real knowledge. Of course, there are some people, there are some impersonalists who are not so bad. They just, they, they don't deny, they don't deny God, they just don't know. But they're just attracted to the impersonal Brahman. And they may do good. They may follow. They may be moral. They follow good principles. They're very disciplined and sense controlled. And they're detached from sense gratification. But, but there are others. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare.
Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna Maharaj. Okay. Okay, Hare Krishna, back again. So we're telling there's two kinds of there's some impersonalists are not so bad. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Hare Krishna, can you hear me? Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna, Hare Bhai. But the very fact the word comes impersonally, that means they deny that the Lord has actually a form. That's one 
a nice way to look at it. Nagaburu Maharaj is online, I think. Okay, thank you. Yeah, impersonal. <laughs> Hare Krishna. Maharaj, Jolin Mataji has a question. Yes. Um, I was just trying to distinguish the impersonalist and the pseudo religionist. I could not distinguish them very clearly. Although I do know that impersonalist uh, does not accept the personal feature of the God and thinks everyone is the God, I could not understand how do you identify a pseudo religionist? Well, the pseudo religionist can be also impersonalist. Yeah. Yeah, it just means that they're, they're not genuine. Pseudo, pseudo religionists means they're not very genuine in their approach to religion. That they may be, they may be practicing, they may be practicing only for, for name and fame. They may, they okay. may make a show. They want to get recognition, they want to be known as some kind of religious person, but they're not actually genuine in their practice. So they can be also so, could be also impersonalists. So I would say that um, another a category of impersonalists is the pseudo religionist. Yes. It can be also the atheistic, right? Uh, it could they could be they could be but that they, they pretend to be a religion they tend they pre pretend to be religion religious but they may be atheistic they may not actually believe in God. Because if they claim themselves to be God, then, then, it's, then that's like atheism. They deny the existence of the real God. They say that, oh, I am myself God, we are all God. Then this is like atheism, practically. Thank you, Maharaj. Okay, so maybe we'll go ahead to the mantra. The next mantra. Oh. Hare Krishna. Can you hear me? Yes, Hare Maharaj. Yes, Maharaj. Can hear you. Oh, good. Maharaj, we can hear you. Okay, good. I don't know. I got this. Okay, who would like to chant T Mantra 13? Punita Mariji wants to chant? Go ahead, Punita. Yes, ma. Anyat eva hu sambhavad. Anyat eva hu sambhavad. Anyat ahu asambhavad. Translation. It is said that one result is obtained by worshipping the supreme cause of all causes and that another result is obtained by worshipping what is not supreme. All this is heard from the undisturbed authorities who clearly explained it. All right, so speaking about uh, worship, right? We're hearing about, in the first, previously we were hearing about knowledge, now we're hearing about worship. Yesterday also was about worship. So one result is worshipping the Supreme and the different result is obtained by worshipping what is not Supreme. That sounds reasonable. That sounds very logical. We are, how could it be the same? But not everybody agrees like that. And some people say, oh no, it's all one. It's all the same. So we'll go, we're going to hear about this in Srila Prabhupada's purport. Please go ahead, Punita. Yes, Maharaj. The system of hearing from undisturbed authorities is approved in this mantra. Unless one hears from a bona fide Acharya 
who is never disturbed by the changes of the material world, one cannot have the real key to transcendental knowledge. The bona fide spiritual master, who has also heard the Shruti Mandras or Vedic knowledge from his undisturbed Acharya, never present, presents anything that is not mentioned in the Vedic literature. In the Bhagavad Gita, chapter 9, verse 25, it is clearly stated that those who worship the, the Pitris or forefathers attain the planets of the forefathers, that the, the gross materialists who make plans to remain here stay in this world, and that the devotees of the Lord who worship none but Lord Krishna, the supreme cause of all causes, reach him in his spiritual sky. Here also in Sri Ishopanishad, it is verified that one achieves different results by different modes of worship. If we worship the Supreme Lord, we will certainly reach him in his eternal abode. And if we worship demigods like the sun god or moon god, we can reach the respective planets without a doubt. And if we wish to remain on this wretched planet with our planning commissions and our stop gap political adjustments, we can certainly do that also. Thank you. So Srila Prabhupada points out differences. He said, if you worship the forefathers, the forefathers are called the Pitris. So there's a special planet where the forefathers reside. It's called Pitri Loka. And so if you worship the forefathers, you go there, right? Some people, it's common, they worship the forefathers and then they go to that planet where the forefathers are. And some people, but it's in the material world, it's not a spiritual planet, it's in the material world. And you go there with your pious activities and when your pious activities are used up, you come back. And gross materi materialists, they like to stay here. So they stay here. And the devotees worship the Supreme Lord, then they can go to the spiritual, the spiritual world. Okay, so different, different place. Uh, go ahead, someone else like to read? Who can read for us? Madhu, Madhu Tausi, Madhuya Tausi. Madhuri Tausi. Did she hear? Madhuri Tausi Madhuji, you there? Can anybody hear me? Yes, Maharaj. Madhuri oh. Tausi is here. Oh, ah, she's not there? Madhuri Tausi? She's here, she's here, Maharaj. Okay, so tell her to read. Adiri Mataji, are you able to unmute your mic and read? Your mic is already unmuted, Mataji. Maybe just have somebody else. Keshava Damodar Prabhu, please read. Maharaj Keshava Prabhu is not here, Maharaj. Oh, okay. Ram Gopinath Prabhu, can you read? Okay, Maharaj. Nowhere in authentic scriptures is it said that one will ultimately reach the same goal by such foolish. Oh. Mm.
हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 रामा हरे रामा 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 हरे 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 कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 रामा हरे रामा 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 हरे 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 कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 रामा हरे रामा 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 हरे 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 कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 रामा हरे रामा 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 हरे 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 कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 रामा हरे रामा 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 हरे 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 कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 रामा हरे रामा 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 हरे 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 कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 रामा हरे रामा 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 हरे 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 कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 रामा हरे रामा 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 हरे 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 कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 रामा हरे रामा 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 हरे 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 कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे कृष्णा प्रभु हरे कृष्णा कृष्णा ओके so did you read this paragraph yet about paying yes, the just now i continue reading did you read it about person buys the ticket from calcutta to reach yeah complete reading the whole paragraph okay so you, you know it's it's uh some people there are some people who put this philosophy around that all the paths lead to the same thing all the paths lead to the same place that's what they say it's a com it's a saying they say yatama tatapat in bengali they say all the paths many paths but the goal is the one they come to the same thing so prabhupada is arguing is pointing out this is not logic it's not logical like that you buy a ticket from bombay to calcutta you go to calcutta you don't go to chennai you don't go any other place you go where you buy the ticket where you buy your ticket to go you go to that place so we have to understand how this this kind of thinking is wrong people and people who teach like that they're cheaters if somebody said oh it's all one just do what uh, all the paths lead to the same thing this is all bogus this is nonsense and prabhupada said this is not what the parampara teach this is not what's taught by the system of disciplic succession so we have to understand things properly okay go ahead when lord shri krishna when lord shri krishna was present on this earth the bhakti yoga principles defined in the bhagavad gita had become distorted therefore the lord had to reestablish the disciplic system beginning with arjuna who was the most confidential friend and devotee of the lord the lord clearly told arjuna in bhagavad gita 4.3 that it was because arjuna was his devotee and friend that he could understand the principles of the bhagavad gita in other words only the lord's 
devotee and friend can understand the Gita, Gita. This also means that only one who follows the path of Arjuna can understand the Bhagavad Gita. Okay, so Prabhupada is arguing more that you want to understand Krishna's teaching. You have to be a devotee. You have to be. You have to. You have to be qualified. You want to follow the path of Arjuna. You have to be qualified. This is the disciplic succession. We have to hear from the teacher. We have to have a teacher. And if the teacher teaches you, oh, it's all one, it's all the same, then you know that teacher's a rascal, he's a cheater. Don't follow him. Krishna doesn't teach like that. Okay, go ahead. Somebody else like to read? What about Gandharvika Radharani? Is she here today? Gandharvika? Not here? Maharaj. Yes, would you like to read first, please? Sure, Maharaj. At the present moment, there are many interpreters and translators of this sublime dialogue who care nothing for Lord Krishna or Arjuna. Such interpreters explain the verses of the Bhagavad Gita in their own way and postulate all sorts of rubbish in the name of the Gita. Such interpreters believe neither in Sri Krishna nor in his eternal abode. How then can they explain the Bhagavad Gita? All right. So, so Prabhupada is saying, even though people may, may be saying the Bhagavad Gita, they may be using the Bhagavad Gita, but they, they, they're cheaters, they give their own philosophy. They don't follow Krishna's teachings. So <laughs> you have to be very careful. Many people, they'll use the name Bhagavad Gita, but they don't speak about Krishna. And they're not devotees, they don't follow Krishna's teachings. So don't follow them. Don't be cheated. Go ahead, Gandharvika. Krishna clearly says that only those who have lost their sense worship the demigods for paltry rewards. Bhagavad Gita, chapter 7, text 20 and text 23. Ultimately, he advises that one give up all their other ways and modes of worship and fully surrender unto him alone. Bhagavad Gita, chapter 18, text 66. Only those who are cleansed of all sinful reactions can have such unflinching faith in the Supreme Lord. Others will continue hovering on the material platform with their paltry ways of worship and thus will be misled from the real path under the false impression that all paths lead to the same goal. All right. Yeah, so, so, what kind of people worship the demigods? What, what, what is their mood? People worshipping the demigods. What do they want to get from the demigods? The mode of passion, Maharaj. Yeah? Why? What do they want? Passion means desires, right? Passion means they have a lot of desires and ambition. So why are they worshipping the demigods? What do they want? Material benefit. Yes. Like what? One child, money. Okay, yeah, these kind of things, right? Yeah, so many things, right? We can worship demigods for these things. Uh, it says in the Bhagavad Gita, it said, people who worship the demigods, they have, uh, they're described in Bhagavad Gita, uh, men of small intelligence worship the men of. First of all, they have small intelligence. That is the one thing which, and that's mentioned here, small intelligence and they worship the demigods to get results which are limited and temporary. Antavattu phalam tesham tad bhavati alpa medasam. So this is the results of their worship. Antavat. Do falam limited and temporary, and it's done by people whose minds are distorted. They have their mind is distorted with material desires. They have a lot of material desires in their mind, so they worship the demigods. Do they get results quickly? 
Or does it take a long time? Anybody know? Probably, but it's not a fulfilling result, I suppose. I believe. Yeah, quickly they get results. Yeah, you worship the demigods, you get results quickly. But of course it's temporary. It's a material result. Yeah. You get one thing, then you want something else. We won't be satisfied. We won't be satisfied. We want something more. Right? You know, you, you may worship Krishna, you may worship the demigod, you want a child, then you get the child, but then you get another problem, oh, the child's sick, oh, I worship the demigod to get better, <laughs> you know, like this. Then worship the demigod, oh, my child going to school, help my child pass the exams, oh, my child has to, going to get married, let her get married to a good person, like, you know, it goes on and on. But if we surrender, if we surrender to Krishna, then that's the best. If we surrender to the Supreme Lord, that's much better. Prabhupada said, only those who are cleansed of all sinful reactions can have unflinching faith in the Supreme Lord. Oh, so we may say, oh, oh, I'm not, I haven't got free of all my sinful reactions yet. Well, we can do. We can get free of our sinful reactions very quickly. What do we need to do? How do we get free of our sinful reactions? Anybody know? Devotional service. Yeah, we just need to surrender. We just have to surrender to Krishna. If we call to Krishna, I surrender to you. Krishna said, if one surrenders to me, I will free you from all sinful reactions. Do not fear. Yeah, Krishna will take care. Just surrender. Others, they will continue in the material platform with their poultry. Poultry means, oh, not very strong, weak ways, methods of worship, very insignificant. They'll be, and will be misled from the real path under the false impression they're thinking, all paths lead to the same goal. What a joke! It's impossible. How could all the paths lead to the same goal? One person is in Penang and somebody's driving up north, he's going up to, to, uh, up to the border and to Thailand, and somebody else is going down to KL. Is it go all going the same, the same goal? No, very different. It's just not logical to see all the paths lead to the same goal. And the Bhagavad Gita doesn't say that. Okay, Gandharvika Radharani, can you keep reading, please? Krishna Maharaj, in this mantra of the Sri Isopanisad, the word Sambhavat, by the worship of the Supreme Cause, is very significant. Lord Krishna is the original personality of Godhead, and everything that exists has emanated from Him. In the Bhagavad Gita, chapter 10, text 8, the Lord says, Aham Saravasya Prabhavo Mata Sarvam Pravartate Iti Madhva Pajante Ma Mudhapava Saman Vitam I am the source of all spiritual and material worlds. Everything emanates from me. The wise who perfectly know this engage in my devotional service and worship me with all their hearts. Oh, okay. So Prabhupada is quoting Bhagavad Gita here. He wants us to understand why we should worship Krishna. Because Krishna is the cause, he's the, he's the supreme cause, right? He's the absolute. But if you worship the demigods, this is something relative. They're not absolute. Demigods are not absolute. Krishna is absolute. He's the supreme. Okay. Who's next to read? What about um, Kundalata Mataji? Would you like to read for us, please? Yes, Maharaj. Here is a correct description of the Supreme Lord given by the Lord Himself. The word Sarvasya Prabhava indicates that Krishna is the creator of every everyone, including 
Brahma, Vishnu and Shiva. And because these three principal deities of the material world are created by the Lord, the Lord is the creator of the all the earth. Exit in the material and spiritual world in the Mantra Veda, Gopala Kapanisa Upanishad 1.24, it is similarly said, He who ex exited before the creation of Brahma and who enlightened Brahma with Vedic knowledge is Lord Sri Krishna. Similarly, the Narayana Upanishad once stated that the Supreme Person, Narayana, decided to create all living beings. Thus, from Narayana, Brahma was born. Narayana created all the Prajapati. Narayana created Indra. Narayana created the eight Vasus. Narayana created the eleven Rudra. Narayana created the twelve Adityas. Since Narayana is a plan, then already manifestations of the Lord Krishna. Narayana and Krishna are one and the same. The Narayana Upanishad 4 also stated Devaki's son, Krishna is the Supreme Lord. The identity of Narayana with the Supreme Cause has also been accepted and confirmed by Sri Pada Sankaracharya. Even though Sankara does not belong to the Vaishnava or personalist cult, the Adharva Veda Maha Upanishad also states only Narayana acted in the beginning. When neither Brahma or no Shiva or fire, no water or stars, no sun, no moon existed, the Lord does not remain alone but created as he desired. Krishna in, in himself stated in the Moksha Dharma, I, I create the Prajapadis and the Rudras. They do not have a complete knowledge of the of me because they they are covered by my illusory energy. It is also stated in the Varaha Purana, Narayana is the supreme personality of Godhead and from him the four-headed Brahma was manifested as well as Rudra who later become omniscience. Okay, thank you very much. Yeah. So Prabhupada is giving a lot of evidence from different scriptures, different scriptures, different Vedas, writings, to establish that Krishna is the original supreme cause and that Narayana is non-different from Lord Krishna. Narayana is the expansion from Lord Krishna and Narayana is the cause of the creation of the material world. And from him comes Brahma and Rudra. And like this, so Prabhupada is giving a lot of evidence because he wants us to understand Krishna's position as the Supreme. Okay? Would you like to finish that this next paragraph, Maharaji? Kundalata Mataji? Yes, Maharaj. Thus, all Vedic literature confirms that Narayana or Krishna is the cause of all causes. In the Brahma Samhita 5.1, also it is said that the Supreme Lord is a Sri Krishna, Govinda, the delighted of every living being and the primal cause of all causes. The really learned person knows this from evidence given by the great sage and the Vedas, and thus they decided to worship Lord Krishna as all in all. In all. Such a person are called Buddha or really learn because they worship only Krishna. Ah, so such the intelligent people, they just worship Krishna. You don't need to worship all the demigods. Remember how many demigods are there? 33 million. Yeah, three, 300, 330 million. 330 million, 33 crore, yeah. So, so many, we cannot worship all these. So we just worship Krishna. He's the Supreme. He's the Absolute. And Prabhupada is a, he's quoting different scriptures to help us understand this. Okay, Rukmini Pati Prabhu, you read now. Okay, Maharaj, thank you. Krishna 
Vedas, all Vedic literatures confirm that Narayana or Krishna is the cause no, of all no. causes. No, no, the conviction. In the drum. The conviction. The conviction that the con Krishna... Okay, Maharaj. Okay, okay, Maharaj. The conviction that Krishna is all in all is established when one hears the transcendental message from the undisturbed Acharya with faith and love. One who has no faith in or love for Lord Krishna cannot be convinced of this simple truth. Those who are faithless are described in the Bhagavad Gita, chapter 9, text 11, as mudas, fools or asses. It is said that the mudas derive the personality of Godhead because they do not have knowledge from the undisturbed Acharya. One who is disturbed by the whirlpool of material energy is not qualified to become an Acharya. Okay. Can you hear me okay? You can hear yes, me? Maharaj. Yes, yes Maharaj. Okay, it's not very stable again, but anyway, Prabhupada is pointing out the importance of that we have to have faith and love for Krishna. And then we can be convinced about this. The people who don't have faith, he said they're like the fools, like animals, donkeys, <laughs> right? The donkeys, the ass. Donkey only knows to work hard, to eat grass. Donkey, very stupid animal. And so people like, some people are like that. They have no faith. They cannot understand that there's a God, that there's a person behind this universe. And so if we hear from the Acharyas, then we can be convinced. We have to get the knowledge. We have to hear from the spiritual teachers, the Acharyas. Okay, but go ahead. Go ahead, Rukmini Pati Prabhu, before hearing. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna Maharaj. The conviction that uh, before, before he... hearing the Bhagavad Gita, Arjuna was just before hearing the Bhagavad Gita. Arjuna was disturbed by the material whirlpool, by his affection for his family, society and community. Thus Arjuna wanted to become a philanthropic, non-violent man of the world. But when he became Buddha by hearing knowledge of the Bhagavad Gita from the Supreme Person, he changed his decision and became a worshipper of Lord Sri Krishna who had himself arranged the battle of Kurukshetra. Arjuna worshipped the Lord by fighting with the so-called native relatives and in this way he became a pure devotee of the Lord. Such accomplishments are possible only when one worships the real Krishna and not some fabricated Krishna invented by foolish men who are without knowledge of the intricacies of the science of Krishna described in the Bhagavad Gita and Srimad Bhagavatam. Okay, so Prabhupada is describing about Arjuna's situation, how Arjuna had a lot of material thinking, he had a lot of affection for the body and for the things in relation to the body, and he was thinking it's good to be non-violent, he's thinking it was not good to fight, but Krishna wanted him to fight, and Krishna convinced him that he should do it. And Krishna convinced him that it was proper for him to fight. So Arjuna did it, and because he did it, he became a great devotee. He's recognized as a very great devotee. So we, we should be careful. The Prabhupada said there are many fabricated Krishna, not real Krishnas, and they try to fool people. So you have to be very careful not to be cheated. Okay, who's next to read for us? What about Tanusha? Oh, Tanusha Mataji, are you here? Yes, Maharaj, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Okay. According to the Vedanta Sutta, 
Samputta is the source of birth and sustenance, as well as the reservoir, reservoir that remains after an annihilation. Janmadi Ashya Yataha. The Srimad Bhagavatam, the natural commentary on the Vedanta of all emanation is not like a stone but is abhichna or fully conscious. The prim primaval Lord Sri Krishna also says in this Bhagavad Gita, chapter 7, text 26, that he is fully conscious of the past, present and future and that no one including demigods such as Shiva and Brahma knows him fully. Certainly half educated spiritual leaders who are disturbed by the tides of material existence cannot know him fully. They try to make some compromise by making the mass of humanity the object of worship, but they do not know that such worship is only a myth because the masses are imperfect. The attempt by these so-called spiritual leaders is something like pouring water on the leaves of the tree instead of the roots. The natural process is to pour water on the root, but such disturbed leaders are more attracted to the leaves than the root, despite the, they are perpetually watering the leaves. However, everything dries up for want of nourishment. Okay. So Prabhupada is give, giving a very important example here, an analogy, very important to understand this analogy. Prabhupada says, the attempt by these so-called spiritual leaders is like pouring water on the leaves of the tree. What are the leaders trying to do? What are they trying to do, the leaders, these so-called leaders? The yeah, what, but what are they doing actually? Why, why, is, what, why does Prabhupada say they're like watering the leaves? What are they doing? Misleading. In what way? Misleading the masses of people into a different direction of thinking. Not on the correct path of spiritual, spiritual thinking. Yeah, they Prabhupada said they're half-educated spiritual leaders. Half ed they know a little, but they don't know it properly. And they only know a little. And they're disturbed by the tides of material existence. So they don't know Krishna fully. They try to make some compromise, make some adjustment by making the mass of humanity the object of worship. So what do they do? They say, don't worship God. They say, worship man, worship the people. They say, worship the people. Sometimes they say like that. They say, the, the poor man in the street, he is God. You should worship him. Some people do like this. You see, this is all the false philosophies which go on. They have a saying, they say, Madhava Seva, oh, Manava Seva, Madhava Seva. Can you understand the meaning? Manava Seva, Madhava Seva. They're saying by worship, by service to people, yes. you're serving God. If you serve, if, if you are serving the people, Humanity. yeah, that is, they say this is real yeah. service to God. So this is not actually true. It's not the proper understanding. So, but people are easily cheated. We're very gullible. We're, we're easy to cheat. We think, oh, very great. Worship the people, yes. And they, you know, they give something for the poor man. <laughs> and they make people the object of worship. But they do not know such worship is only a myth. It's only a myth. It's not real. Because the masses are imperfect. So then Prabhupada talks this analogy about watering the leaf on the tree. Just like if you have the tosi at home, when you water the tosi, do you water tosi every day? You pour water on your tosi tree? 
should do every day is supposed to put a drop a drop of water so where do we put the water you, do, you don't put it on the leaf better not to put, put it in the root. on the root yes put if you put it on the root then the water goes to all the leaves and branches but if you water all the leaves the leaves will fall off right the leaves will fall off and then the, the the plant will dry up if you just put the water on the leaves there was one gardener like that and he was watering all the leaves he wasn't putting anything on the root all the flowers all the plants died because he didn't put any water on the root so very important when you put the water on the root then all the leaves and branches are satisfied so who is who is the root krishna yes krishna. krishna is the root and who are all the leaves and branches Huh? Or the demigods, Maharaj? No, demigods. Every everyone, all the people, every all the people, all the demigods, everyone. They're all leaves and branches. Yes. So when we water the root, we satisfy Krishna. Then all the people and all the demigods and everyone, they're all satisfied, right? Just like the same example. When we put the food in the stomach, then the stomach gets the energy and it goes to all the parts of the body. But you know, you know the story? One day there was a meeting, all the parts in the body had a meeting. And they said, oh, why we always put the food in the stomach? It's no good. The stomach is always getting the food. We do all the work and the stomach gets all the food. So they said, we're going to go on strike, we're not going to put, we won't, we'll, we will not put any more food in the stomach. So what happened? The hand cannot enjoy, the legs cannot enjoy, everything became weak, they all became very weak, oh no energy, body became very weak. But when they put the food in the stomach, the stomach takes the food and it gives the energy to all the parts of the body. So like that, the Krishna is the stomach and all, everything else, we are all parts of the body. So like that, if we satisfy Krishna, then everyone will be satisfied. Okay, next person, who is there to read? Uh, Altanusha, you can keep reading Sri Shopanishad. Okay, Maharaj. Sri Isopanisa advises us to pour water on the root, the source of all germination, worship of the mass of humanity by rendering bodily service which can never be perfect is less important than service to the soul. The soul is the root that generates different types of body according to the law of karma. To serve human being by medical aid, social help and educational facilities while at the same time cutting the throat of the poor animals in the slaughterhouse is no service at all to the soul, the living being. Yes, Prabhupada is saying it's not so important just to serve the body, it's more important to serve the soul. We need to give service to the soul, not to just the body. And then Prabhupada says, what is the point? He said, if, if, if you do so much work for the people, give them medical aid and help and mundane education school, but at the same time they're cut killing all the animals, then this is not good. This is not... because they, they haven't got the knowledge, they haven't got the spiritual education. So the killing of the animals creates a a very bad reaction for the whole world. We get things like this virus, which is all around the world today because of so many animal killing. And so we need to understand how to take care of the soul, how to uh, satisfy the soul, how to serve the soul, not to just serve the body. If we take care of the soul, then we can have a much better situation on the planet. Okay, 
So, who has not read yet today? Natini, you can read. Nantini, you there? Nantini, are you there? She's not there. Yes, yeah, sometimes I can hear you, not very well. Okay, go ahead. Nantini always has a problem. Sorry, Maharaj. The living being is perpetually suffering in different types of bodies from the material miseries of birth, old age, disease and death. The human form of life offers one a chance to get out of this entanglement simply by re-establishing the lost relationship between the living entity and the Supreme Lord. The Lord comes personally to teach this philosophy of surrender unto the Supreme the Samputa. Real service to humanity is rendered when one teaches surrender to and worship of the Supreme Lord with full love and energy. That is the instruction of Sri Ishopanishad in this mantra. Okay, thank you very much. So Prabhupada is describing real service to humanity is to teach them to worship and to surrender to the Supreme Lord. That is the real service to, to humanity. That will solve all the problems of the planet. Okay, Mary, are you there today? Mary? Uh, yes, Maharaj, yes. You can read the, the simple way. Yes. Okay. The simple way to worship the Supreme Law in this age of disturbance is to hear and chant about his great activities. The mental speculators, however, think that the activities of the Lord are imaginary, therefore they refrain from hearing of them and invent some word juggly without any substance to divert the attention of the innocent masses of people. Instead of hearing of the activities of Lord Krishna, such seduced spiritual master advertise themselves by inducing their followers to sing about them. In modern times, the number of such pretenders has increased considerably and it has become a problem for the pure devotees of the Lord to save the masses of people from the unholy propaganda of these pretenders and absolute incarnations. Yeah, the pseudo-incarnations, pseudo-incarnations means they're not genuine incarnations. Remember, how do, you, how do we know who's a genuine incarnation and who's a pseudo-incarnation? Who's just a pretender? Can you say, Mary, do you remember? Uh, the genuine incarnation will be written in the scripture. Yes, right. In yes. The yes. Yeah. They're all the, the real incarnations are all mentioned in the scriptures. They're described where they will take their birth and who the parents will be and what their activities will be. But these people come along and they claim that they're incarnations and foolish people believe them. And some Prabhupada writes about some of the problems which come up. When we talk about the activities of the Lord, then these people say, oh, this is not real, this is just imaginary. Oh, they say five Pandavas, oh, they're not real. They say five Pandavas just mean five senses. And Kurukshetra, no, it's not real, it's just the Kurukshetra is the body. They say like, it's not true. There were five Pandavas and Kurukshetra is still there. You can go to Kurukshetra, it's a place. And so these people, they, but they're, they're, they're so rascal. They say, oh, it's all imagination, don't believe it. But uh, they, will, they will make up their own, they will juggle everything. They will give it some other meaning, you see. Try to, they try to get the, the 
take the attention of the innocent people because there's so many people who don't know and, there's, and we're so easily cheated. Remember, we studied in the beginning, cheaters and the cheated. Prabhupada said, only two kinds of people, the cheaters and the cheated. So people are easily cheated. Instead of hearing about Krishna from the real spiritual teachers, they hear from the wrong people. And they get, the, they get people even to sing songs. Instead of singing songs about Krishna, they have them sing songs about themselves. And Prabhupada said that this time there's more pretenders than ever. We got one lady, we had one lady, in, that she, this was in China. What happened was, uh, she said Krishna came to her and told her, Bhagavad Gita is too old, Krishna wanted her to write a new book. So she wrote a book, she wrote a book, um, she called it Bhagavad Gita Song, <laughs> Puja Vanga Song, you know. And people, oh, people loved it, so many people became her followers. Oh my God, and you, you know, she, it was so bogus, so nonsense. And she gave them initiation, she gave them a name and everything, because she'd been coming to us and she'd been watching us and she thought, she said, well, I can do all this myself. And so she wrote her own book, completely rubbish book, such nonsense, stupid things. But people are so stupid, people are so easily cheated. This Kali Yuga. And so we have to be very careful. Mm -hmm. We had trained, we told so many people, be, there must be a disciplic succession. But still the woman comes along and, you know, she smiles at them and they, and they follow her. She got so many followers and she took so much money from them as well. They just come to get the money. This is the whole thing. People are so stupid. Okay, we'll go ahead. Who's not read yet? Mary, you can read more. Yes, Maharaj. The Upanishads indirectly draw our attention to the Primal Lord, Primeval, Primeval, to the Primeval, Primeval, Primeval Lord, Sri Krishna. But the Bhagavad Gita, which is the the summary of all the Upanishads directly points to Sri Krishna. Therefore, one should hear about Krishna as he is by hearing from the Bhagavad Gita or Srimad Bhagavatam. And in this way, one's mind will gradually be cleansed of all contaminated things. It's Srimad Bhagavatam uh, 1.2.7. Thing says, by hearing of the activities of the Lord, the devotee draws the attention of the Lord. Thus, the Lord, being situated in the heart of every living entity, living being, helps the devotee by giving him proper directions. The Bhagavad Gita 10.10 .10 confirms this. Dharami buddhi yogam tam yena mam upayanti te. Okay, thank you. Yeah, Prabhupada is quoting Srimad Bhagavatam and Bhagavad Gita, how Krishna helps a devotee when somebody is sincere, right? So we, we have to give people, we have to give more people the opportunity to hear the proper message. We have to make this propaganda. That's why we distribute so many books and that's why we have so many classes, so many programs. We try to give everyone the chance to hear about Krishna from the proper channel, from the proper authority, so that we will not be cheated, we will not be confused. And when we hear from Krishna, Krishna also confirms, He helps us from the heart. Okay, who has not read yet? Who's not read yet? Intrani? Intra I will Hare Krishna Maharaj have read now. Who is this? Intrani. Intrani, yes, yeah, please. 
The Lord's inner direction cleanses the devotee's heart of all contamination produced by the material modes of passion and ignorance. Non-devotees are under the sway of passion and ignorance. One who is in passion cannot become detached from material hankering. And one is one who is in ignorance cannot know what he is or what the Lord is. Thus, when one is in passion or ignorance, there is no chance of self-realization. However much, one may play the part of a religionist. For a devotee, the modes of passion and ignorance are removed by the grace of the Lord. In this way, the devotee becomes situated in the quality of goodness, the sign of a perfect brahmana. Anyone can qualify as a brahmana if he follows the path of that devotional service under the guidance of a bona fide spiritual master. Srimad Bhagavatam 2.4.18 also says, Kirata Hunandra Pulinda Pulkasa Abhira Subha Yavana Kasa Daya Yene Chapapa Yad Aparas Ya Raya Sudyanti Tasme Prabhav Vishnave Namaha. Any low born person can be purified by the guidance of a pure devotee of the Lord. For the Lord is extraordinarily powerful. Okay. When one attains. Uh, yeah. Okay, go ahead. You can finish. When one attains. When one attains Brahmanical qualifications, he becomes happy and enthusiastic to render devotion service to the Lord. Automatically, the science of God is unveiled before him. By knowing the science of God, one gradually becomes free from material attachments, and one's doubtful mind becomes crystal clear by the grace of the Lord. One who attains this stage is a liberated soul and can see the Lord in every step of life. This is the perfection of Sambhava, as described in this mantra of Sri Isopanishad. Okay. Hare Krishna. Thank you very much. So Prabhupada is telling us here about the importance of the mode of goodness. You see, if we're not in the mode of goodness, we must be in the mode of passion and ignorance. Right? And in the mode of passion, he says, probably in the mode of passion, we cannot become detached. We've got such strong desires. We're attached to material things. So that's a problem. And when we're in the mode of ignorance, it means we don't have any understanding. So we don't know about God or what He is or anything. So we have to come to the mode of goodness. Very important for us. We'll hear this again and again. The importance to try to come away from passion and ignorance and come to the position of goodness. Position of goodness means position like a brahmana. And devotees are all on the platform of the goodness. So devotees are also brahmanas. That's why devotees also get the brahmana initiation. Because one who is a devotee should be in the mode of goodness. So he's given the Gayatri mantra to chant. So a devotee, by the grace of Krishna, he gets free of passion and ignorance and he becomes in the mode of goodness, he becomes in the mode of goodness, one is pure, one is happy and peaceful. So who can be a brahmana? Anyone who follows the path of devotional service. So Prabhupada quotes this verse from Srimad Bhagavatam, second canto. And he, it, it, the verse, Sukadeva Goswami spoke this verse. He describes all the different races. Kirita means the Africans. And Kasha Daya, Kasha means the China people. The Han means the European. Like the, all different races, different parts of the world. Kirita, Hunandra, Pulinda, Pukisha, 
Abira Shumba Yavana Kashadaya. They can all be delivered by the mercy of the pure devotees because Krishna is very powerful. Krishna empowers the devotee to deliver the people. So, when we come to the Brahminical platform, we become happy, enthusiastic to do devotional service. So this is the, the science of God. One gradually becomes, when we become Krishna conscious, we become free of material attachment and our mind becomes clear. No more disturbance, right? So this is the liberated stage. So this is being described here. Okay, so if you have questions, you can keep them for tomorrow. Anybody have a question just now? You don't have too many questions, eh? <laughs> All right. Did you get my, my did you get that uh, website I sent to you about the film? To look at the film about scientific proof of God? Yes, my gosh. Okay, so you can look at that movie. It's good to study that. Hear that movie again. Many points about how to how to argue. Huh? Many points show us in that movie, it tell you how, how you can present scientific proof, logical proof about the existence.